And they're off to a great start to the season for the 2023 BYU Autumn Classic. I'll highlight some of the runners during this race. You can see the color indicates the year of eligibility for the cross country season. And we'll highlight some of the names and times and schools here and give some interviews as well to get to know a little bit better the BYU men's cross country team. Just climb that hill. Let's go ahead and look at a 3D representation of the field and the course taken by drone and then reconstructed into this three dimensional surface. We can see if we take a measurement here, it's about a four meter or about a 11 foot, 3.75 meter uh, gain. And so a little bit of a hill there, not much. Uh, and then another little bit of a climb up to the back baseball field. Each loop is about one mile, and they're going to do this four times around. I'll highlight some other parts of the course as well. Creed is a 
up at the top as well. Joey is in there as well. James is in there. We also have a BYU alumni in the red, Brandon Garnica, running with his former two teammates. Looking good here. They are now officially past the halfway mark. Look up on the board, BYU. You'll see the scores updated there along with so BYU is starting to pull towards the front. Weber is looking pretty strong at the front end, followed by Salt Lake Community College. As you can see, BYU This is one of my favorite parts of the course, a little drop about six feet or so as they come around this turn and then onto the track.
running just over five minute miles for a 20-30 performance on this tough four-mile course. Congratulations to Weaver State on a second place team finish with 42 points. As you can see, we are 21 minutes in, so they're running 5.15s per mile. A lot of Weaver State, a lot of Salt Lake City Community College athletes coming in, and an absolutely dominant performance by our very own BYU Cougars with a near-perfect score of 17 points. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to make you aware that the person who's been announcing is Angela Wagner-Warren a talented and capable BYU athlete back in the day, four-time conference champion in the Mountain West in the mile in the 800, two-time second-team All-American in the 800 meters, both indoors and outdoors. Angela's talented and capable, and you can see now she's also an excellent announcer. We are so grateful she moved back to California, originally from South Africa, Angela Warren. Thank you, Doug. Me and Doug, you've been here. Doug's been here for a long time and an Olympian in his own right. So congratulations to Doug Padilla, still making things run at BYU. Congratulations to all these athletes. Looks like we have a third place team result. Salt Lake City Community College coming in there with 85 points. So a nice strong performance by them. Utah Valley University, fifth place runner, still awaiting their fifth place. And then Westminster College as well, waiting on their last two runners to score. Remember, four Coast Country, if you're here to watch your roommate and you're not. All right, Creed, first place finish for today. Yep. Uh, you and Joey right down to the end. What was it like running up there with the big pack of BYU guys? Yeah, it's super fun. I think we have a we've developed a really good culture on the team recently, and like just every single guy on our team is just so legit, like super good. Like everyone can run with us. And we're like just packing it up during workouts, so it's like so fun during races. It like it makes running just so much more fun, just knowing that all your, all your brothers are just right there with you. And yeah, yeah it just it's so fun. Great. About a, uh, I think you guys are about a 450 mile average, something yeah. like that today. Kind of uh, testing the wheels. What did yeah. it feel like that last mile when the pace started quickening? Yeah. You and Joey kind of took it. Uh huh. Yeah, we our plan was to like take it out a little more chill. We didn't want like a full race effort, and me and Joey have been a little bit sick, so we decided to go a little chill the first two miles, and then Joey started moving. I was like, oh, this is hard. Like, felt like it was really quick, but then I kind of just like settled in, like stayed relaxed, and it ended up feeling a little bit better. And yeah, it was really fun to test the wheels a little bit and start going fast the last like K or so. Yeah, it was good. Okay, beautiful course, cut really short, almost like a yeah. golf course. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the course today. How was yeah. it? Yeah, when I first heard we were doing it here, it was, I was kind of iffy about it, but I was actually pretty impressed. Like, it was, it was fun. Some of the turns were a little tight, obviously, but I liked it, honestly. It was good. Okay, well, good job. It's a very strong performance today. Look forward to the season. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Jody Noakes, uh, second place finish right at the end. First. Oh, first place. <laughs> you first, you gotta leave him. Oh, wow. I don't know. I haven't seen the results yet, That's but awesome. I think so. Yeah, well, good job today. It's so close. Uh, tell me about the race today. Uh, it's just a fun race. Like, it's a really fun atmosphere having all the fans here, having so many people run from the team. Like, it's not every race where we get 20 guys from the team all running together. So it's fun to, like, be in the race and you hear, like, everyone on the team is getting cheered for behind you. And it's cool to, like, feel that strength behind whether people are in uniform or they're just running unattached. It's really fun to have that. Oh, fantastic. What was it like running up there with the guys? I mean, there's so many BYU guys up there, up front. Tell me about that. Like, what, what kind of things were going through your head during that? Honestly, like, I kind of expected that. I, I feel like we're going to races like this expecting that. Like, we're just going to have a tough, big group at the front. And so, I was just kind of, like, expected. And it's just, like, workouts. So, it's not really something, like, unusual that I'm used to. It's just, like, that's how we race. And that's what we're going to keep trying to do in the season. Okay, great. Now, going into the Big 12 Conference, what are your thoughts on that running now? 
in uh, a different conference? Yeah, it'll definitely be different as far as our conference meet. In years past, we haven't really had to like put a ton of effort into our conference race, but this year we will, because obviously we want to take home that conference title. Um, so we're going to have to step up, but we are ranked really high in the conference. Uh, we have a couple other good teams that we'll be competitive with, so it'll be fun to, to go into the conference and have that competition, kind of be fighting for that conference title. Okay, great. And tell me about the last mile of the race. So you guys were all together as a pack, and you and Creed just kind of like found another gear and uh, you know, surged ahead. Tell me about that last mile. Yeah, we were kind of planning on that. We were planning on taking the first two miles really relaxed, and I think that's real, what really contributed to the last mile is that like we were just chilling in the back the first two miles. Everything was relaxed, and then when the second or third and fourth mile came, we kind of knew that we had to turn the gas on and sprint it in. Okay, way to spin the wheels a little bit today. Looking forward to the season. Thank you. Okay, James Corgan, and he was third place for the Cougars, fourth place overall, right behind Brandon Garnica. Oh, yeah. uh, great race today, and uh, really just uh, last season with track, with that 1340 at regionals and then coming out here being one of the top guys on the BYU team. Tell me about that transition and just kind of discovering your potential. Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like you kind of shock yourself when you run 1340 for the second 5K of your life. So I think from there it gave me a lot of confidence and so even though I'd run the same workouts, I think my confidence built a lot and so going over the summer I just acted like I was one of the top guys and I think that mindset helped a ton. I didn't really change too much except for the mindset and that kind of prepared me to just be part of the group. Okay, going into your freshman year for cross country, redshirted last time, and uh, did you have an injury, uh, redshirt? Or I was it? just coming back from my mission. Just coming so back like from your mission. So like a week before we started. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so tell me about that. You've never really traveled with the team. Uh, this is going to be your first season as a freshman, but now it's like you're one of the top guys. Tell me about that. What are your expectations for the season? You know, I'm just excited to be with the big dogs. I think uh, whatever happens will happen. I'm just going to race as hard as I can, and the results just kind of show themselves, I guess. Okay, fantastic. So uh, tell me about just running up there with the top pack of BYU guys. So many of the BYU guys up there up front uh, and just in there with the pack, drafting, working together. Tell me about that experience. Yeah, it's awesome. I think our big mantra this season, especially going into uh, cross country, is being boys in the boat together. And we read that book over the summer and talked about it at our camp, and it's just been a big theme. And so having all your brothers right and left and right behind you is a really nice feeling. And we all just kind of let go of ourselves and focus on the old, you know, the big team goal of supporting each other to get the team title. Okay, great. Tell me about that last mile, pace picked up. Uh, Joey and Creed, like just going after it. Yeah, and that was awesome. uh, tell me about uh, that when it started hurting. Uh, what what kind of what was your experience that last mile? I gotta tell you, that was probably the best feeling mile. I I can't say any part felt good. I was feeling pretty bad today. So when they picked it up, I was like, well, at least we'll get one too. So I kind of just held my own and uh, was just holding on for dear life, and then uh, kind of sprinted it in just to make sure we got a top three there. So awesome! Well, way to spin the wheels today. Oh yeah. And uh, great job today, and looking forward to the season. Thanks. Coach Ed Eystone, tell me about today, what you saw in the team. Well, super happy. You know, your first meet of the year and it's on your home course and uh, you're trying to see new guys and see how they're going to respond. And then you're holding out a few people as well, and so uh, which kind of forces other guys to, to rise up, step up. No surprises up front in terms of our, uh, you know, Joey Noakes. Uh, Creed Thompson up there uh, leading us uh, in the battle. I thought they ran a patient race. That was kind of the plan. Uh, and they looked good when it was time to roll. Um, really, I thought the, I, I really loved the performances from the Stanford twins. Uh, Garrett and Jacob uh, took that early pace and then stayed, stayed in there uh, and had nice finishes. And James Corrigan came through and then Bonzi, Lucas Bonzi, you, you wouldn't expect him to finish strong. And then we, we saw some, some new talent kind of come through that we're kind of looking at that we were running unattached. So all in all, I think it was a, a good day for us. Uh, we'll add in a few more people in our next race and, uh, and uh, give other guys opportunities. But uh, for, for, for day one, race one, I think we, we got through this one okay.
Okay, fantastic. So, tell me about um, the new conference and going into the new conference. What are going to be the challenges and opportunities with the new conference? Um, we're in a new conference this year. I hadn't heard it. Oh, oh yeah, Big 12. No, uh, no, that's all we've been talking about for the last couple of years. No, it's exciting. Uh, we're excited to be a part of it. Uh, we realize that with that new conference uh, comes some real, real talent that we're going to have to be uh, going against at the conference meet. In terms of how does it change our, our season, not a whole lot because we still do the early season home meet. Uh, we'll go preview the, the national course, we'll go to the Nutty Comb uh, meet, and then where it does change is we will be going to the Big 12 Conference Championship, Iowa State. Uh, we'll be facing some various talented teams. Uh, Oklahoma State right now is ranked number two in the country. We're ranked number three, so, uh, so we have our work cut out for them. They had um, some great recruiting, uh, so we'll have to really uh, you know, go to another level to be able to be competitive with them, but I think we can. Uh, and we've beaten them in years past. They got us last year at the national meet, uh, but hopefully we can, uh, you know, represent BYU uh, well. Great. So in the last couple of years, we've seen just times drop quite a bit mm -hmm. in track and cross country. How has that changed your coaching with new technology, new shoes, new training, better information online? Anything changed? I think the biggest change is, is obviously the equipment has slid things to the right in terms of uh, just improvement it, it, up to you know five seconds per mile. And so I think it's easier for the young man that I coach to kind of adapt uh, than it is some of, for some of us old, old coaches because four minutes in a mile, you used to be really excited about that and think, oh, this is an all-American opportunity. Uh, now it's almost got to be 355. Uh, so, so I think more than that, I just I've had to recalibrate what is a fast time. You know, back in the day, if they ran under 29 minutes for 10k, that was a fast time. And now you got to be, you know, low 28 minutes for that to be, uh, or sub 28 to be a fast college time. So it's really about the older coaches recalibrating what is fast, realizing that they've got this new mechanical advantage with the with the hardware, with the shoes and stuff they're running. Uh, running in. And I think, you know, even discounting that, uh, generation after generation, uh, because of the internet, because of training techniques, because of good squads, uh, there is improvement that's naturally going to take place. Uh, also, the fact that the, the COVID uh, seniors, the guys with extra years, uh, they're, you know, eventually those will all run through the system, but uh, just having people with an extra year of eligibility, all of those things have been factors in making things faster, and you just have to, you, you have to adapt or you get left behind. Okay, well, excellent work today. Looking forward to the season, Coach. Okay, thank you. All right, Coach Wait, uh, you've been helping out this year with uh, cross country, also took over as the assistant coach for track and uh, also here for cross country. Tell me about what it's been like working with this team. Uh, it's just awesome. Like, I, I mean, leaving my old school at the University of Delaware was hard just because you build such close relationships and uh, you have goals and vision and dreams to achieve with those athletes. But when uh, Coach Eystone called and asked if this was something I was interested in, uh, it was a no brainer just because of the culture that I know that's here that I had when I was a student athlete. Um, and so coming into it, I, I was excited because I was going to be able to be part of that again. But it's even better than it was. I, I think that over the last 10 years, it's continued to develop and grow. Coach Iceland just continued to do an amazing job with it. And I, when I got here, I just couldn't believe what it was like and, and the work ethic of these guys, the leadership, the camaraderie. Um, so I'm just really honored to be part of it, honestly. Um, they make me better, and, and so every day is just a joy coming to work, and, and I love it. Absolutely love it. That's fantastic. As an 800-meter runner, yeah. and specializing that as a collegiate athlete and just doing outstanding, uh, you've brought a lot of things like strength training and some of the form technique, other things like that to the program. Tell me about some of your unique contributions you've been able to make and yeah. how you see that adding to the program. Yeah, so I listened to this podcast uh, last year um, from a former BYU football coach, Bronco Mendenhall, and he, he talked about something that really kind of influenced me. He said that in football, the two-minute drill, the last two minutes of a football game, is only about 3% of the game, but it has 
more than 50% of an impact on the game. When you look at all the results over the history of college football, usually there's one play that comes down to something in those two minutes, and it changes the outcome of the game one way or the other. And I thought about that and how similar our sport is. If you look at the NCAA championships last year, uh, NAU ended up winning it, and one athlete, Brody Hasty, passed like 10 guys in the last 200 meters, right? And that 10 point swing was the difference in a national championship or not. Um, through the majority of the race, even today, you see these guys, they're clumped up, they run in a big pack the entire time, right? And it's the end that separates everybody. And I started thinking about, that's our two minute drill. And so we started talking about things that we needed to work on to have that big swing in the game. And, and the sprint mechanics and their speed at the end of a race, the strength, the form, uh, all of it can just create a major, major swing. I mean, you think about in the last 200 meters, let's say each one of our guys passes five people, that's 25 points. At what other point in the race does a 25 point swing happen? But it's very feasible to pass five guys in the last 200 meters in a cross country race where it's just, it's just a giant clump of people and people are finishing every second. And so we started thinking about implementing some things that we thought would help with that. And we were really pleased to see the impact that it had last track season. Uh, our guys were finishing really, really well. We think it's going to continue to, to help us this cross season and, and into the indoor and outdoor season too. Well, great. Finishing strong is so important and you bring so much to the program. We're glad to have you here. Thanks. This video and some of the annotations you've seen were produced with the help of Alpha Peak software. We're working on this to help runners run more efficiently and also reduce the risk of injury. Now, some of the things that you could find here from this race, if you want to go to Alpha Peak Gallery and then scroll down to the 2023 Cross Country BYU Autumn Classic and then search by name or bib number and it will bring up the personalized videos for each runner where they are highlighted and everybody else is in black and white. And if we come back here, you'll also see alpha form. And if we click get started, you'll see some of the types of analyses. The one that we've been working on recently is analyze hips and hip drop, record a video, submit it, and then it will give you analysis to help you run more efficiently and avoid risk of injury. So I hope you enjoyed this video and love to hear any comments about the types of things that you'd like to see as a runner.